Hello and welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast, episode number 34. In episodes 30 and 31, I spoke to you about Audiobox and I want to talk to you a little bit more about that again today. But first and foremost, let me thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for being there and for joining me at today's podcast. I'm actually quite excited because I'm going to read a little bit out of the Learning Lifestyle Diary, which is a little book which has fondly become known as the Little Pink Book. And it is basically an account that I wrote when in 1998. And so let me, let me just start with reading a little tiny piece out of the introduction. And then I'm going to drop in a piece of the um, narrated audiobook from somewhere in the middle of the book, just for you to get a little idea of what this book contains. And I'm excited to tell you all about it and to read this little bit um, in the, of the introduction to you, because here at Oikos, we are producing these audiobooks for you. We're narrating the books that we've written in the hopes that you will be able to get support from them. So let me start here with the introduction. I begin this journal on the 12th of August, 1998. Two months ago, I underwent major surgery, followed by further minor surgery. I then had to face trauma and grief in a way that I'd never known before, as my youngest brother was killed in an aeroplane accident. Being a home-educating family, one might wonder what happened to education while mom, also teacher, was unable to attend to the family. Well. Firstly, as we have home educated from the start, we become very accustomed to the learning lifestyle. So we see and use every opportunity we can to learn together. So now back to the podcast. That is just the first paragraph of the introduction. And here is another little piece from the actual narrated book. Day one. We all stumbled out of bed at 8.30 a.m. today. I had a bad night with our four-year-old son, James, because he had a very sore throat all night. Missy, our nine-year-old daughter, woke up complaining of a headache and nausea. I shall have to write now a little on Missy's situation. Missy was born with a blood disease whereby she does not manufacture enough antibodies to fight infections. As a result of this, she has had to have antibodies infused intravenously into her system every three weeks. The week leading up to her treatment is not so good as her body begins to struggle and she consequently suffers from many unpleasant symptoms. In this week leading up to treatment, we adapt her learning to suit her ability. Here is an insert revision that was added in August 2000. As with the changing of seasons year by year, so it is with Missy's condition, continually changing. Missy's treatment has taken a direction whereby she now has daily subcutaneous infusions of immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins are selective antibodies drawn from donors' blood plasma. We as a family travelled to the UK and stayed at a hospital for one month to learn about subcutaneous therapy. This change of direction in Missy's treatment was crucial, as she was experiencing many adverse side effects from years of intravenous infusions. We returned from the UK after many wonderful learning opportunities from flying to the undergrounds, hospitals, people's homes. Missy is now able to receive her infused immunoglobulins at home. The infusion is given into the subcutaneous tissue of the abdomen. Two hypodermic needles are used, which are attached by a tube to a syringe, which is attached to a pump, which monitors and administers the immunoglobulins into her system. End of 2000 inserted revision. So for this day, which starts out not so good, I make a quick decision that today will be a games day. We will play most of our lessons. It is now 9am and we have just finished breakfast. And I suggest to the children that they fetch the language game for us to play. As they run off, I use the opportunity to put away the ironing. Big mistake. I should have stayed seated at the table and waited for the children to return with the game. While putting the ironing away, I see that my cupboard is getting a bit crammed, so I start pulling out clothing which has not been worn for a while. So now here I am sorting clothing, getting desperately sidetracked, and it's now 9.30. Off I go to seek out the children. The one I find in the forest climbing a tree, the other has wandered across to the cottage close to our house to visit our friends who live there. 
I call them in, which they're not too delighted about, and now try and persuade them that this language game will be fun. It takes about 15 minutes for them to show any signs of enthusiasm, and then we are off. We spend the next two hours going from one activity to the next. We do a Bible study, followed by a puppet show. Missy does some preschool activities with Jamie while I go and put a load of washing in and toss a chicken into the oven. Then we play a maths game together. They then both draw me a lovely picture to put on the wall. We need to adjust our days according to Missy's health as she often struggles with feeling unwell in the morning, but by the afternoon she begins to feel a bit better. Lunchtime. Missy sets the table, Jamie runs out to play, I do the last bit of preparation for lunch. Once lunch is over, being Thursday, it is time for cleaning, pets and their homes. Guinea pigs, hamsters, birds, dogs, all get themselves and their homes cleaned. While the children are busy with this, I make a few necessary phone calls and continue with household duties. At five o'clock, we gather to have some sport together. Today, we had a short basketball match. By 6 p.m., we are inside having dinner. 7 o'clock is bath time. 7.30, stories are read until 8 p.m. for Jamie. We pray together, then he sleeps, and I continue to read to Missy until 8.30. Then we pray together, and she goes to sleep. Now, the reason why I feel this little pink book might be a support to you is I was very honest when I wrote this journal in 1998. It just feels like an age ago now, but it was a wonderful account of our daily learning and living. I think it was a wonderful account. As you can imagine, it's a lot of memories that I, when I read it now and when I narrate it to you, I'm enjoying all the memories from that time. And so I did speak to you a little while ago on a previous podcast about memories and making memories. And I never thought to mention journaling. And maybe if you did just journal each day, or once a week, or whenever you find you have a moment, grab your journal book, get yourself a nice book, and just every now and then put the date down and write in it something that's significant, because you may just be blessed as I've been when it came to narrating my Learning Lifestyle Diary. It was a very, very good experience of me going back down memory lane. And I hope you have realized by now, or discovered by now, that you can get these audiobooks from all the various audiobook platforms. It's as simple, really, as going to Google and putting in the title of the book, in this instance, A Learning Lifestyle Diary audiobook by Sonia Wood, and hopefully you will see all the very many different places where you can actually access it. However, we're also going to be putting, or are putting, should I say, these audiobooks onto the Oikos website as well. We've started a new category called audiobooks. So if you happen to be visiting the Oikos Family website, oikosfamily.co.za, and you go to store, you'll be able to see that there's a section called audiobooks, and there you can just click on the link and it'll take you to where you can actually purchase or download or get it for free or whichever way it might work for you. And from the beginning of the Oikos Family podcast, I haven't wanted to use this as an opportunity to let you know about what you can go to the Oikos store um, to buy. It's not That's not what it's about. It's actually the podcast is about encouraging you and supporting you on this journey. But because I've been narrating these books, these audio books, these books that have been written some years back, I've realized how much they contain that I hope will be a support and encouragement to you as you travel this learning lifestyle journey. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave you to listen to a little bit more of the Learning Lifestyle Diary as we insert a little piece, a little sample of it here for you to listen to, we hope. And hopefully, rather than me sitting talking to you now, you'll be able to have time to go and listen to a Learning Lifestyle Diary narrated audiobook. That is the hope and that is the plan. So if you have any struggles with this, with being able to actually get a Learning Lifestyle Diary to listen to, you can just let us know. You can email me directly, sonia at oikosfamily.co.za, or you can go onto the website, oikosfamily.co.za, and you can go to chat to us, and you can ask somebody there to help you, and so on and so forth. We are here to help you, and I hope that we are helping you. I hope these podcasts are helping you. So I do hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you get to listen to some audiobooks. I hope you found them helpful. You can hear I'm full of hope for you. 
But I really, truly do hope you have a wonderful week. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you again at the next podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye for now. Day four. On arrival at the hospital, we discover that there is a problem with the beds for the hospital is very full. We have to wait patiently in reception while we try to find a bed, as Missy must always be in isolation for her treatments. Jamie sees a flight of stairs, goes to the top, decides he wants to come down the steps like a crocodile. So I turn around to see my son heading head first, flat on his stomach, sliding down the stairs. A lesson follows on how to and how not to behave in public places. Also, how to be good stewards of our bodies and why it is important to keep ourselves neat and clean when we are out for the day. After this in-depth lesson, Jamie retorts, But mommy, crocodiles can't walk downstairs, and I'm a crocodile. At this, we all burst into peals of laughter and realize how unreasonable it is of us to think that this little crocodile could walk down the stairs. Finally, after keeping everyone quiet and contained for just a little too long, we are called to go to Ward D3. A private room, so private that it only has space for one person, the patient. We realize immediately that we will have to be very wise and creative with this day, as three children and an adult and nurses and doctors coming in and out are going to have to enjoy the day in such a confined space. I draw this to everyone's attention and we all agree that we will be growing in tolerance and patience with each other for the rest of the day. The doctor arrives and assists me while I put Missy's drip up. I've had to go through training to take on the treatment of Missy's condition so that we can one day move on to doing home therapy. I've been having intensive training for 18 months and now next month I will have to go to London and Greece for further training and to purchase the equipment for home therapy. The treatment goes well for the day. I even managed to fit in a meeting with someone from the blood transfusion services who comes to talk to me about up-to-date technology regarding the antibodies which we use for Missy. This is all in preparation for my training in Europe. The children behave beautifully all day. I read to them. Shamini has brought her learning books along, so she does some handwriting, language and maths. We play fantasy games together, we eat lunch together, but we're all delighted when the eight hours is over. Missy's treatment is finished. We must now enjoy another two hours of confinement in the car for the journey home. We talk about how some people live in their cars. They eat, sleep and so on in their cars. We discuss how we get to know each other better by being squashed in one place for a few hours. How one becomes annoyed more quickly over being bumped. Yet another becomes irritated when the noise levels are too much. Our conclusion is that we consider it a good thing that we must all endure together. We discuss what character traits would assist us and how to work together on developing and building them. On our arrival home, everyone helps with unpacking the car, with which Jamie is not impressed because it's raining and he simply cannot understand why we must all get wet when Daddy could just unload the car on his own. He quickly gets challenged as to whether he would like it if he were Daddy and all the family went inside and left him to get wet. We remind him that he is in training for being a Daddy himself one day. And so now's a good time, as any, to practice. By the end of the unpacking, who do you think is ever so pleased with himself for carrying so many parcels? Look, mommy, I got so wet. With an aren't I just so clever expression and tone. The girls prepare something light for the family to eat. And we all recount the past two days and mutually agree that we are very happy to be home and in the country. Bath, bed, Read for 30 minutes and sleep.